Here we go, guys. You ready? So, um, for, oh, wow. All right, so for this one, first one. Um, first one, we know the capacitor is not charged, so that means that this technically, okay, I drew positive and negative, but technically at t is equal to zero, they're not charged yet. The electrons have just, the electron will just, will just be leaving and just arriving. So the voltage across it is zero volts. And then the voltage across a resistor A, we use the loop rule, which is um, if you go through any complete loop, the sum of all the voltages must equal the battery voltage, because the battery is what's causing the, is what's creating the potential difference. So the capacitor has zero volts across it because it's not charged yet. And then you're back at the battery. So this resistor must be, you can think of it as like eating up voltage. So in this loop, this resistor must be the only thing, well, it's the only thing that can eat up all 24 volts. So there's 24 volts across A. And then you can use loop rule again for resistor B because if you go through this loop, um, there's no current going through B because we know that the capacitor is like a clip switch, infinite, infinitely, infinitely no resistance, only at this moment in time. No current through B, so zero amps, and no voltage. Well, zero zero voltage across B as well, because we know A has 24, because of this loop rule. So zero volts, zero volts, zero amps. Okay. Any questions? Feel free to ask me down below in the comments. Um, yeah. Okay. So now current at A. Well, we can just do Ohm's law. I is equal, well, delta V is equal to IR, transform that. I is equal to delta V divided by R. So 24 volts divided by 4 ohms is 6. 24 divided by 6, I mean, no, 24 divided by 4, yeah, 6. So 6 amps. And then the capacitor is in series with it, so 6 amps. Um, pretty much the rule is you don't want to use Ohm's law, you don't want to use those equations for the capacitor itself. Uh, you want to figure out the, the capacitor values after you figure out everything around it. Uh, from what I've learned, those don't, the, the equation doesn't quite apply to the capacitor. Okay, so let's move on. Now, in case two, the capacitor is at eight volts. So we can just go ahead and throw it in there. Voltage across A, all right. Loop rule, loop, 24 volts due to the battery. This capacitor ate up 8 volts, so it must be 16 volts across A. Boom. Voltage across B. Loop rule again. Uh, this is our loop now. So if we know A has 16 volts that we're eating up, B must have how much? It's 24. 8 volts as well. Okay. So it turns out they have the same voltage across thing. Which makes sense because they, if you go, if you look at the loops, they both link back to A. So if A is eating up 16, they both must eat up 8 volts. All right, now current. So with current, let's see. Um, why don't we just do a current? I is equal to delta V over R. We found out that there's a 16 volt voltage across it divided by the resistance of just A which is 4. 16 divided by 4, which is 4. So, 4 amps. Okay. 4 amps, and then let's do B, because Ohm's law doesn't quite apply to the capacitor. Remember that. So, we don't do the capacitor. Let's do B. So, I is equal to delta V across B, which is 8 volts. So, 8 volts divided by 8 ohms of resistance is 8 divided by 8 is one, one amp. All right, and now we have the capacitor's current. So one amp's going through here, and then at this point, A has four amps. So the capacitor must be providing the three amps that's missing. Okay. All right, cool. All right, now, last part, case three. Um, well, they tell you that the capacitor is at a constant voltage. It's like an open switch. So we figured out earlier that there's uh, 
electrons are flowing this way, there's no flow through the capacitor. So we know that the capacitor current is zero, zero amps. Just like an open switch. Yeah, open switch. No flow of electrons through. Okay, so then, like I said earlier, this is just like a series circuit. Pretend like this isn't even here. So we can add up the resistance in the series. So four, because they're in series, it's just you, you add them up. So four plus eight is equal to so the 12 ohms. And then the potential difference across this is 24 volts in total. So if we consider this as, if we combine them to one resistor, technically, and we can figure out the current that's going through. So 24, ohm, uh, 24 volts divided by 12 ohms of resistance is equal to 2 amps. So this battery is pumping out 2 amps of current through the circuit. And because they're in series, and there's no current flowing through the capacitor, then they have the same current going through them. So, 2 amps, 2 amps. Add the voltage across them, then you can just do delta V is equal to IR. So, uh, I is 2, R for A is 4, so 2 times 4 is 8. And then B, 8 is, 8 ohms is the R, 2, 2 times 8 is 16, 16 volts. So this guy heats up 16 volts, this guy heats up 8 volts. And then, let's see, all that's left is the capacitor voltage. So, what do we do? We do, we can do loop loop. So, this loop, it's 8 volts, 16 volts, as it's 24. In this loop, it's 8 volts, and this has to be 16 volts, so that's 24. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Even though there's no flow of electrons through here, um, this capacitor must be storing 16 volts because of uh, loop rule must be true. That when you go in any loop with the battery, you have to add up to the battery's voltage. So 16 volts are eaten up in here, and then 8 volts right here. Okay? All right, so yeah, that's how you break down this problem. Okay, guys? And then a uh, cool thing, uh, so actually, let me figure this out. This is. 16 volts. Cool thing I just want to talk about real quickly. There's a switch here where if you open it, something cool happens. If you open it, now this flow is all broken. So I'm going to erase all this. This flow is broken. And then the electrons are now going to go from the, capac the capacitor's negative plate and down. And they're just going to go back to the positive plate. And then the capacitor is going to, um, its voltage is going to go down, 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 down. Because all the excess electrons that were stored up here, I mean down here, in this negative plate, are returning through the resistor back to the positive plate. And it's going to go down, 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 and go down to zero volts if you don't close the switch. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Alright, so, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Hope this was helpful. Um, yeah, it's, I know it's kind of confusing the first time through it. I think once you talk yourself through it, it'll make, once you talk yourself through it and explain it to somebody else, it'll make a little more sense. All right? Feel free to rewatch any portions that went by all too quickly. quickly. Uh, yeah, if you like this video, as always, make sure you like it down there. And if you'd like to help support this video project or any future videos, you can do so on my website, orgomadeeasy.org. There's going to be a tab for donations. Uh, or you can just tell your friends to help support this, uh, these videos. Okay, all right, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in another video. Let me know if you have any ideas or anything. See ya.